So you both operate as freight brokers, correct? That's correct. Explain to me, and either one of you can take this question. Explain to me and my audience, what is a freight broker? Oh, I can do it. So basically, a freight broker is a middleman. So we um, are we go to a shipper who becomes our customer, and they give us loads, and then we literally just give it to the carrier for them to haul it, and we make a percentage off of that transaction. We don't handle the freight. We don't drive the trucks. We don't have to have equipment. We're just the middleman. So a freight broker is literally the in-between guy. That's correct. We, and in we your literally- case, That's it. In your case, girl, women. Women. Yeah. That's right. we, we get out in the field and we go find customers that have freight that needs to be moved and we we have to get them to trust us. So our main job is being a problem solver and building a relationship with, with customers and carriers. You know, customers are the actual shippers, but the carriers as well. So we have to get out there and find the people that have the freight that needs to be moved. And then we turn around and we find trucks to get that done. And like Sam said, we never actually touch the freight. In our case, it's a little different because we are able to broker freight to our own trucks. I as well have five trucks. So when we started back in 2009, we had that one truck and at first we made a lot of money, but then we failed miserably. I mean, we, we went through everything that you can imagine. And on, that's before, really we get, a part of story. before we get to that part of the interview, cause I'm going to go there. I want to know the mistakes. Okay. I want to know the different things to look out for. I'm just okay. the backstory now, if, if you don't mind. No problem. Okay. Freight broker. I get it. Freight agent. What's the difference between a freight agent and a broker? So the agent actually works under the broker's authority. An agent can actually have their own business, their own entity, and and, in the freight world, we call it their own book of business, but they don't have all the financial and legal responsibilities as a broker. So if you said, if you called me up, Sean, and you said, hey, I'm thinking I want to be a freight agent and work under you because I have some customers, some friends I already know that's in, you know, shippers and they have things that need to be moved, you can work under my brokerage without going out and getting your own authority, your own insurance, your own surety bond. And you're literally you're literally just responsible for getting that freight covered. We do the same thing. Brokers and agents do the same thing, but the broker holds that legal and financial responsibility. Understood. Very similar to like a real estate agent and a real estate broker. Great analogy. Great analogy. Can an agent work for multiple brokers at the same time, or are they exclusive to one broker? That's a great question. And I'm going to be perfectly honest and transparent. I personally have worked for two brokers at one time. I do not recommend that. It it, it can get confusing, um, and it could be very different reasons why. I literally worked that way because I had a friend that um, owns a brokerage and I partnered with them on a very large account. So I worked under his brokerage as a freight agent while I was working for another broker. They both knew I was very upfront um, because it was a customer that I was going after for a while in in the government sector. So um, I, I told them both what I was doing, but I don't really see a need to do that unless you have a special circumstance. So the answer is yes. It's not illegal, but you know I, I don't suggest that anyone do that. Say if you want to add. Good. And I was going to say it's probably it's probably the preference of the actual freight broker too that they're working up under. They may only have them you know do like a non compete clause, but like she said, I mean it's definitely not illegal. I mean you just sign a contract with multiple freight brokers. They just want to make sure that there's you know like I said a clause in there that they can't work with another freight broker. Because if they fall out, they can take all them customers and just move them to another. Is it one of those unwritten rules in the industry that it's frowned upon? I know legally they can do it, but is it is it one of those things that if I come to you guys as an agent and I say, look, I'm also working with, you know, another broker. Would you, Sean, go ahead, just stick with that person. 
when you're ready to be exclusive to us, come to us? Or is it, is it frowned upon or is it commonplace in the industry? Because we get so busy, I honestly don't see or hear of a lot of people working as an agent under multiple brokers. Like, for my situation, I think it was just very unique because, I mean, I'll just tell the customer, AFES, I don't know if you're familiar, but AFES is the Army and Air Force Exchange, which is located on military bases. And I wanted that customer for a long time, and it was hard to get that customer. My friend's brokerage had the credentials that I didn't have at the time, or even the company that I was working with at the time, to, to get that customer. So I was very transparent that, you know, I had been making those calls, I had been making the connection, and basically, he had a place for me to come and move that freight, and we could both benefit. So I'm not going to say that it's so much frowned upon, but I, I would think, just like Sam said, as the broker, you know, you need to be very clear on what it is, you know, how your business runs and what you expect. You know, you would have them sign that non-compete clause. You know, I mean, there's so many ways to do it. It's your business. Like, you can do it the way you want as long as you're following the rules of the FMCSA. So I personally don't hear of a lot of agents just working for multiple brokers. Um, I, to this day, I still benefit from that customer under my friend's brokerage, even though I have my own. So... It's just a business relationship that we build and we have a, a mutual understanding and we both benefit from that customer. So again, I don't, it may, it could be frowned upon, you know, because you may think as a broker, this agent um, may take some of our company's information to another broker. So I, I highly, I just don't recommend it unless, like I said, you have a very certain um, special situation that, you know, would, would allow you to do that. Got you. Sam, question for you. Again, this is your world. It's not my world. So I'm going to ask very basic questions because I don't know who's going to be listening to this on podcast form or watching this in video form. Mm -hmm. You guys are using terms, uh, carrier, shipper. Yep. Can you explain in very dumbed down ABC terms who is a carrier and who is a shipper? Sure. So your carrier is your trucking company. Those are the ones who actually own the truck. So, um, you know, like you probably heard of like J.B. Hunt, just anybody that's on the freeway, anybody that has to deliver to an actual shipper. Your shipper is your customer who has the warehouse, who holds the products in that warehouse that has to be moved. So that could be Walmart, that can be Kroger, Target. Um, that's why we tell people it's so easy to find shippers, because anybody that has freight to move is a shipper. Got you. Great answer. What is needed to become a, a, a broker? Is this something, if I, if I said today, I want to become a broker, do I have to go to four years of college? Is there a six-month certificate program? What is needed on my side to become a licensed broker? And I guess, Sam, you can answer that question um, yourself. Sure. Um, so no college degree is needed, no cert certification. Honestly, we recommend training. Um, because everything you that you need to be a broker, you can't Google. Um, but we basically help you um, like summarize everything and put everything together in the correct order and the right steps, right, that you need. So um, you have to have what's called a motor carrier authority. That's through the FMCSA, the Federal Motor Carrier Association. And um, you apply for that the same as you would if you were trying to get a trucking company. You have to have the same motor carrier authorization to broker freight. You then have to have what's called a BOC3, that's a blanket of coverage, and that is literally a process agent in every state that can accept a paperwork or like a claim on your behalf. Um, you have to have a surety bond. So it used to be $10,000, now it's $75,000. Um, so you just uh, uh, pay a premium of that $75,000 based on your credit and your experience. Um, what am I missing? Oh, the UCR. So the UCR um, covers like, um, so it's, it's not it's not a requirement of the FMCSA, like it is for the freight broker um, authority, but what it is, you have to have it in place to cover um, motor activities throughout the state. Um, and it's, I think it's like $62, um, so you do that once a year. And with all of that, and you have your customer, you could be a freight broker. And Tristan, if I'm missing something, uh, let me know. <laughs> No, that's it. So you're saying today, 
if I want to, because from the outside looking in, you would think that it is so deep and it's so much involved to get into this business. There are no classes that I need to take. There's nothing online. There's nothing that I have to have in terms of my background, meaning I don't need to have been a driver and really understand the industry. So, so long as I take care or check all of the boxes that you just mentioned, Sam, I can go out and work as a legal freight broker? Yep. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.